What an audacious move by the Northern Empire. I really would not have expected them to go in here. Anyway, welcome back to Glass Cannon, and we're going to be fighting Arkor's party. This is actually a guy that I haven't really known too much about. He seems kind of a bit, um, shall we say, on the fringe of the uh, Northern Empire society. I don't think I've ever seen this guy in the game before, which is actually kind of weird, because you'd think... Considering I've played the game such a huge amount, I would know this fellow, but I don't recall his name at all, but... Alright, I guess that's uh, that's how it goes sometimes. I guess you're not really going to be too familiar with absolutely every single person in the game, but still. Anyway, we are now going to be going into a battle here. We're going to be outnumbered pretty significantly, and I'm not sure how we're going to do this, because, as you know... We are attempting to besiege Mysia. That was actually what I was attempting to do before we were rudely interrupted by these friends of ours. And this is actually a pretty easy victory for us, I'm pretty sure. If I can... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Let me see if I can... There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, you could see here the... Re <laughs> I mean, obviously, the main point that I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to get my people in a situation, or shall we say, in a position where they can do massive damage as soon as the enemy comes over the valley. Obviously, that is very much dependent on what the AI uh, decides to do. I mean, we are now going to release a bunch of arrows. Uh, not entirely sure. I don't think that's really going to work, guys. I'm actually going to just uh, tell you to hold fire for the moment. This is not going to work. We're going to have to wait a little bit of time just for the opponent to get a little closer. You never know whether you're going to need those few hundred arrows that we're firing off. I'm a bit worried about this, to be fair, because they do outnumber us, after all, and um, I don't really want to suffer another defeat if I can help it. So... Let's see what happens now. There we go. I'm going to tell my people to fire away now. Wow. That was some pretty massive damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's a little better. I was actually hoping that they would fire upon the uh, the enemy's cavalry, but they seem to be a little bit more preoccupied with firing over in this direction. I suppose that is... I guess that is making quite a bit of sense, considering... Ooh, there they come. There they come. They're now cresting over the hill. Let's see if we can do some damage ourselves. Nice! I actually hit someone. Can you believe it? Okay, I can't. Very nice. Oh, we actually hit someone else? Really? Right. What has happened? What has happened to me right here? I seem to be getting lucky. Instead of showcasing any degree of skill, I'm just getting very, very lucky indeed with my, with my accuracy somehow. But, whoa, a headshot too? Oh, you're spoiling me, Brunhilde. You are really, really spoiling me at this point. I would not have expected to get any kills whatsoever, or at the very least, I wouldn't have expected to get any hits even. But it seems like we're doing a massive amount of damage, as you can quite clearly tell. It is primarily due to our positioning on this little, little, uh, well, I wanted to say hilltop, but it's not really a hilltop. This little side of the valley that is a little bit more conducive to massive damage oh yes and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to continue seeing this throughout the fight we've got to be a little bit cautious though i'm trying to shoot that guy in the leg it's not going to work he's he's got a pretty good shield to prevent that from happening i'm going to tell my forces to hold fire once again don't want to use all my arrows of course i was trying to shoot him in the head do you see that uh don't think I'm going to be able to shoot this fellow at all. Seems like the enemy is literally just waiting now for us. Okay, I'm going to move towards them then. And I'm just going to speed things up real fast just to make sure that we get there within good time. And I'm going to put my archers round about here. The enemy is still very... What are they doing? Because here's the thing. They decided to attack me. So this is not me being aggressive towards them. And now, all of a sudden, because we are winning, they are now, you know, deciding to change their strategy and are being very, very apprehensive and just not very forthcoming at all, you know, because let's face it, would you really want to walk into your death? Probably not. So that's, um, it's kind of a bit annoying for me, but I, I guess it's more annoying for them that they're going to perish very, very soon. 
But uh, yes, anyway, there we go. More bombardment. Oh yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we literally take less than 20 casualties in the entirety of this battle. I wouldn't be surprised. Gonna tell my infantry to charge in now as well. We gotta make sure that they are acting in our best interest instead of just standing there not doing much at all. And I think we can probably tell our archers to charge in now as well, because it seems like the enemy is now in a full retreat, or at the very least they should be. I mean, if they're not in a full retreat at this point, then something is very, very definitely wrong with their commander. He's probably dead. <laughs> All things considered, he is probably dead. Anyway, we're just going to speed things up real fast, and that will indeed be the victory. Did we lose less than 20? Almost! We lost 21 units in that fight. Pretty impressive, if I do say so myself, but that is purely the environment giving us that advantage. I don't think it's really anything to do with my own strategy. I mean, I did place them on there, but I, I'm not going to take credit for that. I feel like the environment was just extremely conducive to mass slaughter with archers. Very, very nicely done indeed. Anyway, let's see if I can let all these people go. Hmm not sure whether it's even worth me letting them go at this point. I mean, generally, I think it is just because, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, when I get everything has a price, I'm going to be able to do a little bit more and I'm going to have more freedom to do what I want in that regard. But it's also on the sort of outskirts of do I really want to use such a powerful method to gain territory because I mean as I said before I mean I can always just choose how much money I spend on it you know I don't have to take the, the you know cheapest price available and let's face it most of the time whenever you use everything as a price the enemy usually wants you to overpay anyway so I don't think it's going to be too too easy for us I have 275 in trade at the moment I would like to be able to get more can I please get some more I I don't know how many caravans I have at the moment. Do I have? I have zero. Well, that, that explains things. That explains things a little bit, yes. I was thinking to myself, what's actually going on? Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, well, uh, never mind. Apparently, I am now being interrupted once again by... Uh, what, what is her name? Veneranda. Veneranda is attempting to uh, do something here. I guess what I will do is I will just lead the assault straight away. This is obviously not something that I wanted. I very badly wanted to try and take down the walls because I wanted my Isaiah to be a nice, smooth transition into us capturing it rather than this, which is not going to be smooth whatsoever. It's going to be very bumpy and we are going to take many, many casualties as a result of are rushing in pretty much i mean i had to rush in because otherwise well what are we going to you know what are we going to face we're going to face a massive army that we could potentially suffer a defeat from and i didn't really want to go with that although if we were on the same battlefield it's highly likely that i would have been able to achieve victory but it would have been costly i think with that amount of units i think it would have been very difficult for us to maintain a decent kill death ratio and I think that's my main, that's kind of my main concern at that point, you know, it's my main concern. Anyway, I'm just going to place my forces in a spread out fashion, just try to give them the maximum amount of coverage of the enemy's battlements. And I'm going to see if I can maybe do something myself. We do have a couple of pieces of siege that we have constructed. So we do have the battering ram and we have the siege tower as well. So hopefully we're going to be able to place those into a decent position. And I'm going to try and shoot through here if I can. Nice headshot. Yes. Another one. Very good. 
How am I being shot through here? Can I ask? How am I being shot through here? These guys are literally the most incredible sharpshooters that I've ever seen. Because as far as I'm aware, they, are, they cannot penetrate these barricades with projectiles. At least as far as I'm aware, you can't do that. But they are somehow able to, um, to hit me from here, even through this extremely small opening. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but I guess they're just very talented. Yes, that must be... That must be the case, right? It can't be because the AI is, you know, just supernaturally good at hitting people through there, but oh well. Whatever the case, let's take out that crossbowman and maybe... Where am I being shot from? This is the question. Look at this. Where am I being shot from? Oh, this guy. <laughs> yes, I'm dead, I think. Pretty much dead. Nothing I can really do about that any further, unfortunately. Yeah, there's just way too many archers. I don't know, there's way too many archers in a really awkward positioning. I think that's the main thing that kind of caught me off guard there, because I was thinking to myself, okay, where am I being shot from? And then I was being shot from behind. Didn't realize I was being shot from behind, so he did massive amounts of damage to me in that time where I was confused. And then I got shot from all kinds of different angles. So that obviously put pay to my one-man expedition towards the battlements, of course. But I think we should be fine. I mean, the battering ram is up still which is pretty good we've got some siege ladders up and most of our people are now going through the front which is actually perfect that's kind of what we want them to do after all and yeah my forces are just completely dominating them now which is absolutely what we want to see and i believe that should be it yeah it is indeed it okay so we lost 22 which is pretty significant most of those being bear assassins, which is obviously kind of harsh. But I think worth it, considering if we had not achieved victory here, this would have been an extremely painful defeat because we would have had, well, quite obviously, the uh, enemy's army bearing down on us from, from uh, outside. And no doubt they would have attempted to attack us and probably gotten, uh, gotten us into a battle and then we would have been injured and a sure defeat was to follow no doubt. Anyway, gonna ransom all my prisoners right there and gain a little bit of extra roguery skill, you never know, that can become quite useful with selling loot and things like that. That's probably the reason why we're getting so much money as well, by the way, from our loot, because my um, my uh, roguery skill has increased um, quite, quite a significant amount. I wouldn't say a massive amount, but definitely quite nicely and enough that it is going to provide a uh, decent benefit Anyway, let's just wait here for some time, see what the enemy is going to decide to do. They are going to go in. Okay, this is intriguing. I'm not sure if this is a good idea for them to do so, but they're going to very, very badly try to get their siege equipment up and running as soon as possible. So this is going to be kind of touch and go. Not sure if we're going to be able to do it. I will give my Zaya to Penton, obviously. Kind of makes sense to give it to him, of course. And we are going to see what happens here. I'm actually going to see if we can maybe... Uh, no, I can't make peace with the Batanians. Obviously, I can't make peace with them just yet. But it seems like my forces are almost back on their... Uh, well, al almost all of them are back on their feet, which is actually quite nice. Thraktorite Castle is an empire culture, so I will give this to Faron. Yeah, seems he's probably... Well, at least I hope so, cross fingers that he's going to take care of that quite nicely. And it seems like, yes, indeed, they are now wanting to go in. I guess this is actually kind of a blessing in disguise, potentially. Me not eliminating the walls or destroying them completely has made it much more difficult for the opponent to, you know, get inside and actually do the damage that they need to do to our archers to be able to prevent them from inflicting massive casualties to them but you never know maybe they're going to be able to do that anyway so we do have a bunch of ballistas on the walls as you can see there's one there and i think there's yeah we actually have four ballistas available so that's actually super nice we might be able to get on some of those and if we are able to achieve victory here it means 
that there is a very friendly army that is very angry at the people that are attempting to take Mysia, and maybe we're going to be able to do something with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully go to the top here. And I will try to get on the ballista. I very badly want to get on this ballista. It's super fun to be on this. Hello there. All right, here we go. Can I... Can I hit them from here? No, that wasn't a hit, really? Okay, kind of surprised. Okay, I am I am failing pretty hard. Okay. Okay, I hit one. And that was a Berserker Sergeant. <laughs> uh, it wasn't one of ours. It was just someone that uh, has been rescued or converted to the enemy's side. But still, yeah. Not a good, uh, not a good feeling to eliminate one of your own units. That's for sure. Ooh, I'm really not doing a good job right here. It's because it's so far away. I just don't know the uh, the appropriate distance to go for here. I think I'm firing way too high at the moment, so I think I need to lower it a little bit. Let me see if I can maybe find something a little bit closer. It doesn't seem like I'm able to do that. I mean, there are a bunch of units behind the trees here, so maybe I should just fire it and see. No, I did some damage to an object. Well, that's very useful, isn't it? Ah, okay, there is actually a battering ram coming our way, but the battering ram is... I mean, it's highly unlikely as a ballista that we're going to be able to inflict enough damage for it to be destroyed. I did kill one of those guys. Okay. Kind of interesting. Would not have expected me to do that, considering it's just one unit. Usually ballistas are fantastic for getting multiple kills at once, as you've seen in previous episodes or a previous series. Maybe you've seen that, where we're able to get... You know, three, four kills with one shot. It's just so much fun to be able to do that. Really, really satisfying. But um, <laughs> the satisfaction ratio right now is a one out of ten. Because apparently I am just not able to hit anything with this. Oh, there we go. We, we did get a, a couple of kills there. That was a little bit better. And it seems to me like this is this is pretty much done. I don't think the enemy really has a hope that they are going to even get into the walls. I mean, they might, but I think isn't the is the siege actually destroyed? Is the is the battery? Yep, the battering ram is destroyed, or at the very least, they have no one to push it. That might very well be the case. Anyway, I'm actually just going to tell everyone to speed up. And let's see what happens here. I'm actually getting shot from here. How am I getting shot from here? This is weird. But yeah. The amount of damage that our forces are capable of doing because we have just pure archers for the most part. I mean, you can see the amount of kills that my bear assassins are getting at the moment. They have literally gotten 500 kills. Just purely them. But obviously my army is pretty much just consisting of bear, bear assassins. Which, you know, all things considered, that is kind of to be expected then. Oh, I seem to be stuck. Well, this was a this was a mistake and a half, wasn't it? Okay, well, the enemy is surely thinking that themselves, so I don't think I really need to worry too much. But yes, we lost a grand total of 39 units. Or, uh, yeah, 39 units, 37 units, technically. And that's actually kind of amazing. That is... <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. They obviously just completely overestimated their strength. And uh, they didn't think about the defender's advantage. The defender's advantage was the main reason why we were able to achieve anything here. Obviously, apart from the fact that we had mostly archers. I mean, archers are generally going to give you a massive, massive benefit whenever you are in the defensive and uh, vice versa, they are obviously going to be pretty weak when you're attempting to take something. Um, unless they have two-handed swords, of course, in which case they might have a slightly easier time, but it is still going to be a bit of a slog, as we have seen in the past. Pen can knock anyone. Oh, yes. Anyway, um, Batania is, is actually wanting peace, so I think I might literally just say yes to this. Just to get them out of the way. 
and to, uh, you know, pretty much not have my forces split between them any further because I don't think they own any fiefs any further, so I don't think it's actually going to benefit us to stay at war against them. I mean, if I've made that mistake now, then that's obviously my mistake to make, and if it does actually end up that they have something, then, well, that's obviously just, you know, bad luck. But, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't seem like they have anything. So unless there is a defector somewhere or another that they manage to convince to join them, which is highly unlikely in itself, but you never know. Sometimes these things can happen. Anyway, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. We're just going to basically try and recruit as many companions as possible at the moment you may think oh what you're doing ah yes well you know you know it's basically just to form a caravan and we're going to be getting a bunch of my people into caravans as much as possible there we go there's another one and these these people are basically just going to be going out there trying to earn a, a quick a quick amount of money not really anything too dramatic I literally just need them to get uh, 25 I just need them to get 25 skill points for me and that is pretty much it I don't think it's gonna be impossible for them to do so but I do think it is going to be a little bit difficult unless they run around together if they run around together and they trade different goods which I very much hope they will trade different goods if they, if they trade the same goods then this is gonna be a very very <laughs> well unprofitable time for all by the look of things but yes hopefully they will trade different things okay so there's a lot of vassals here with very very small amounts of armies or units in general they really do not have pretty much anything to write home about here can i actually do damage here yep i can okay we're just gonna do a real quick auto resolve let this guy go take some prisoners get my people leveled up i actually need to um, continue recruiting, uh, you know, some, some people because I'm uh, not at max. And it seems like one of my caravans has already been eliminated, which is really not very good. Okay, these guys, let's uh, do another auto resolve, get them dead. There we are. Let's let these guys go. Do they have anyone that we can take? No, but they, can do, yeah, they do have a couple of prisoners, which I suppose are going to be kind of nice for us and a little bit of loot too. And uh, yeah, I suppose this is the main problem with starting caravans super close to enemy territory. I didn't actually think that they would go deeper into enemy territory. I thought to myself, oh yes, they're going to be smart about this, you know? They're going to be smart about this. They're going to go in the opposite direction. They're going to go over into, you know, anywhere, basically. Anywhere else except to the north. But no. No. They just threw caution to the wind, quite literally, and went towards Emprila. I really don't know what gets into these guys' minds at times. I think to myself, why would you do that? You know, you have 30 units in your army, basically caravan guards, and we know caravan guards. They are not especially amazing, but apparently, um, <laughs> apparently the AI... They think they're the best units in the game for some unknown reason. But yeah, there we go. Anyway, let me see what I can do here. I'm going to go to Makeb real fast because apart from the fact that there are a lot of units in and around this area, I would like to fight Decantia if at all possible. Can I? Mm. No. Yeah, the Northern Empire is very, very frustrating to fight at the moment because they just have so many small vassals. Maybe I should just take them prisoner, to be honest. Maybe it would be a better idea, he says, as he lets all of them go once more. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. I'm thinking to myself, maybe it's a better idea to take them prisoner because then we're going to have less annoyances all over the place. And I think I might start doing that. I do have a pretty significant amount of relation with a lot of different vassals right now. And a lot of different clans do tend to think that we're pretty cool. You know, we're pretty pretty cool person. So maybe... Um, Maybe it would be a good idea to take the prisoner now. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to start taking the prisoner. Let's just literally smack them all in there. Smack them all in my uh, prisoner's hold. And then uh, probably put them somewhere else. I don't know how... Yeah, we're really far away from any of my fiefs. And I don't really want to let them go in this way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> ransom offer straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to let you go straight away, sir. All right, so I could ransom my prisoners now, but... I actually want to choose the people that can be ransomed. So let's just transfer everyone except 
the vassals. Going to get another 32,000 for that, which is actually quite nice. And we're going to go into the trade screen here as well because I want to sell all of my stuff. 126,000 from that. Just insanity. I still feel like Roguery is one of those really slept on uh, perk trees. I don't know whether you think it's really, really good or not, but I don't know. I feel like it's it's kind of like secret OP, you know what I mean? It's like one of those, one of those uh, perk trees which doesn't really get a huge amount of praise most of the time because it doesn't have anything super powerful within it. But the, the passive benefit, the passive benefit and then the final um, the final perk in its tree is so incredibly strong. But you wouldn't think it, you know. You'd think, oh, th really? That's all it does? You know, it, it doesn't really seem that amazing, but it actually is. It's actually super amazing. Anyway, yeah, so look, look at this. Increase loot amount by 1%. For every skill point, over 200 and you may think, well, that's nothing, right? No, actually, it is indeed something. Because look at look at how much we're getting right now. We're getting 25%. So if we just take the 25% straight away, and we need 275 skill level for this to even become unlocked. And as soon as you take this, that gives you 75% increased loot. And on top of the 25% as a base at 100 skill that we already have, you're getting 100% extra loot. So imagine that. You loot, I don't know, a couple of vassals, and let's say you get a hundred thousand worth of loot. You then double your money, basically. You double your money straight away. That's the reason why I have said multiple times that I think roguery is one of those secret OP sort of um, sort of perk trees, and you wouldn't you wouldn't think so, you know? You wouldn't think so. That's why I say it's a bit it's a bit sneaky, which I think is actually kind of in keeping with the with the name. You know, it's a it's a roguery tree, you know? I let someone I let one of those go by mistake. Oh well, never mind. Not that big a deal, I suppose. We can always take him prisoner at a later point. Uh, but Amprilu is going to be a bit irritating because there are a lot of vassals in the area, and they're actually uh, proving to be somewhat uh, more present than I thought they actually would be, to be honest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to get some fire catapults up though. And uh, we're going to hopefully be able to destroy the enemy's garrison a little bit before we even get inside. That is hopefully going to work this time around, because last time I did that, I actually got killed by one of my catapults. Yeah, yeah, if you didn't see that, then you missed something amazing. Oh yes, uh, it could only happen to me, probably, right? It's one of those things that can only happen to me, because uh, the game just knows, you know? The game just knows, oh yes... It's about time that I kill this guy once again with some friendly fire or whatever. Yeah, that does generally tend to happen quite often to me. Anyway, I am now ready. We have three catapults. Was one destroyed without my, without my knowledge? I'm actually not entirely sure. Oh well, never mind. Let's head on in and see if we can take Amprila. I believe this is one of the last fiefs that the Northern Empire actually has available to them. So if we can take this, then that is basically it for them. Whoa, what, what, what's actually happening here? It's like a blizzard or something. That's actually pretty cool. I like, the, I like this effect. Makes us really look like we're emerging from the forest. And a blizzard has been going on and we managed to start a fire somehow. But yeah, there we go. That was, that was pretty cool. And then we get to see these wonderful fire arrows and fire catapults be fired into the distance. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool in my opinion. Okay, oh, oh, hello there. What's this? Is it gonna hit? Oh, it did actually hit some people, but I don't think it really did too much. Nah, they're not. Uh, they're, they're, they're getting a bit closer. They are getting a bit closer. Okay, so I'm actually gonna have to tell my forces to go over here. Let's tell them to stand there. Let's tell these people to go over in this direction. Mm, this is not really where, where I wanted them to be, to be honest, so I'm going to have to reposition them once we get over here. The slow motion is a little bit detrimental at times, because it does make it more difficult for you to get into a, a particular position and then order your forces. So it's kind of cool for cinematic effect, of course, but most of the time you kind of just want to get into that position and then just do the thing that you set out to do. But anyway, let me be a bit careful here. I really don't want to die this time. 
he says as he potentially dies. What do you bet? I actually wonder whether I'm... Mm, we're actually taking a lot of damage right now. Where's the battering ram? Has that already been destroyed? Yes, it has. Okay. Uh, where's the siege tower? You see, now that's the problem, you see. I have no idea where the siege tower is. Apparently the battering ram was destroyed. The blizzard is completely obscuring our vision at the moment, which is admittedly a very cool effect. But it is unfortunately not really helping us. Okay, I'm going to have to tell my forces to charge in here and see where they go. It seems like we will have to use the ladders, yes. Okay, so the enemy is now starting to dwindle in terms of their forces, but we are also sustaining massive casualties. As I said before, archers are not very good at taking um, taking castles or towns, and especially with my setup as well. They are pretty lightly armored, you know. I mean, that's the thing. I, I did say that I was potentially going to remove all their armor and stuff like that, but then I thought, ah, uh, probably not the best idea, but they do have very light armor on in comparison to what you might expect them to have at this point in the game. But, yeah, this is going to be very, very bad. Okay, let me see if I can clear them out a little bit. Oh, that was some massive damage. Ow. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm completely dead. There's nothing much I can do right there. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do here. Are we even going to get inside? Yeah, it seems like someone has gotten inside. It seems like the other side has gotten in. Have they? No, they're not doing very well either. Ah, we got in through the... How do we get in through the gates? They haven't destroyed it. It seems like someone actually got in, opened the door. They literally opened the central gate. That was real sneaky. That was real sneaky. That is actually really amazing for them to have the AI and the... Uh, shall we say the foresight to be able to open up the central gate and then for people to actually use it that is really kind of unheard of because most of the time whenever I do these kinds of sieges I am the one that always has to go and open the central gate and even when I do that it always feels as though no one really utilizes the fact that the door is completely open oh I should take all these actually and just put them in the garrison um, but yeah that's that's actually really encouraging and super nice to see for once because usually they don't do that as I say anyway let me go into the garrison here I'm just gonna place a whole bunch of units in there and let me just make sure I'm not putting any bare units in there you never know there we go yeah there we are okay that is looking real nice super super easy and quick and we can now ransom our prisoners I actually don't want to do that just yet because we have a whole bunch of lords in there as well so let's just place all of them in there. And then we'll get all the lords back. Thank you very much. Going to get another 22,000. Going to sell my loot as well. There's another 40,000 real fast. And I believe I can pretty much just wait here for some time now. I wholeheartedly assume that the enemy does not have any way to retake this. So I'm very much, uh, very, very pleased about that. And let me see. I think I'm going to give this to Penton again. I'm not sure whether it's a good idea to put all my eggs in one basket, in the Penton-shaped basket, but um, <laughs> he's basically the only one that we have that is nearby with a bunch of thieves that he owns. So it kind of makes the most sense to give it to him, right? I mean, that's that's my logic behind it anyway, but could be incorrect. Could definitely be incorrect. Anyway, just, just going to wait here for some time and see what happens. Cyratos Castle is under siege. Hopefully they're going to be able to... Oh no, it's not under siege any further. Okay, that's kind of intriguing to me. I wouldn't have expected them to run away from such a minimal garrison. I can only assume that there are... Yeah, look at that. There's only 235 in there. How dare they run away from such a minimal, minimal defense? Oh, well. Oh, we're, we're declaring war on the uh, on the crusade. Okay, uh, that's kind of interesting. I guess we are indeed attacking the crusade. This is a very interesting maneuver. I wouldn't have expected us to do this either. But, alright. Okay, so the Kuzate only has 5,200 combat strength. We have 15,000. 
wholeheartedly assume we are going to be perfectly fine doing this. Oh, seems like Garios has also declared war against us. Okay, that's going to be a bit problematic. Yeah, I was I, w I was more worried about the um, the Western Empire declaring war on us than the Kuzate, to be honest. Because now this is what this is the reason you see. This is the reason why I was worried about that. Because the Western Empire doing this basically cuts off any hope for easy reinforcements. Because our reinforcements right now are basically going to encounter resistance every step of the way. And it doesn't matter whether it's a minimal vassal or the strongest army possible, they're always going to encounter some kind of problem. So that's the main reason why I was a bit worried about that. Anyway, my trade skill is two, 279. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.